Today, we're going to be getting into chapter 9 of 2 Chronicles, but before we go there, let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, most high and holy, righteous God, you are the one true God. There is no God but you. And we are so grateful, Lord, that we get to come here and celebrate what was done for us, celebrate our salvation, and to get deeper into your word and to study your word and to get to know you better through it. And Father, we just thank you and pray that you would open our, our hearts and our minds to receive your word, Lord, and help us then to also see how that we can apply it to our, our daily lives now, and then to share your word with others. Father, we just pray that you would fill this room with the Holy Spirit, grant us understanding, in Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 So before I get started, uh, I did look up Ophir, Duncan. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, nobody seems to know where it is. <laughs> it was, it, there's, it's, it's anywhere from, from South America and any pick a spot in the globe and that's where it was. Whoa. Yeah. So, I, it's, they're, they're, yeah, it, it was literally, there were that many different guesses at, at really? where, oh, yeah, at where Ophir there was. was. There was, there. yeah, there was, there was, it was Mexico, Peru, Argentina, um, the, uh, some of the island countries, and I'm like, I can't imagine that they sailed, you know, from what Israel. Well, I'm willing to be in Africa. What yeah. I've run into as the best guess scenario is the Arabian Peninsula somewhere. That would have been, yeah, that would have been my guess, is somewhere there, um, it, it has to, you, you would think it would have to be nearby, because you've got half your crew who doesn't know anything about sailing, right? And the other half would be some experienced men, but... That's a whole lot of learning to do, <laughs> sailing across the ocean well, thank like that. You for looking. Yeah, I tried. All right, so now let's pick it up in chapter 9. And we get a visit from a queen. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, his cupbearers also, and their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Let's take a time out right there. She was told about Solomon, and we're going to see later on, that we'll see here in just a minute, that that. She confesses that she had heard about Solomon and about his wisdom. So she comes up here to, or she comes to Jerusalem to meet with Solomon with a lot of her own hard questions. And so she, she gets there with her entourage. It's a rather large group of people with her. But she gets there and she meets Solomon and she starts asking him all these hard questions. And without hesitation, he's providing her with, with the answers to her questions. She's impressed. But it's not until he goes up to serve the Lord. Then it tells us, then it tells us that she was left without a spirit. The, the, she, she was just emptied out of herself. And she was amazed at Solomon's God. God is reaching out through Israel, through Solomon. He's reaching out to all the nations at this time. The Queen of Sheba had heard of his fame, but until she got there, now all of a sudden she's like, wow. I had no idea. Her spirit, it says her spirit 
was no more in her. Now, I just try to ponder that for a minute. What you thought you knew is suddenly not only challenged, but defeated when you see the righteous God in action. That's where she's at right now, spiritually. Spiritually, she's understanding that everything I ever believed was wrong. Look around at the blessing of this nation. They have the true God. That's where she's at. All right, let's pick back up in verse 5. And she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit, I believed not their words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me, for thou exceedest the fame that I heard. She's saying, I was told about you, but I didn't know the half of it. There is so much more <laughs> to you, so much more about you, so much more about your nation and your God that I want to know. I'm absolutely just flabbergasted at all this. Amazed. Now she continues on in verse 7. Happy are thy men. And happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on his throne to be king for the Lord thy God, because thy God loved Israel to establish them forever. Therefore made he thee king over them to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king... And hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, great abundance and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. And the servants also of Huram and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought algum trees and precious stones. And the king made of the algum trees terraces to the house of the Lord and to the king's palace and harps and psalteries for singers. And there, was, there were none such seen before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire. Whatsoever she asked beside that which she had brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. And take a time out right there. Solomon said, well, let me treat you right as well. Decide what you would like. And just take it. That's, that is faith in God that he will restore whatever Solomon has given. You can check that fact for today. You check that fact for today. You see it in your own life. Give. The Bible tells us to give and it will come back to you. Don't give because you think it will come back to you. Give with a with a. With a clear conscience, give with a, with a heart of love, but you can't outgive God. That's, that's my, where I'm getting at with it. You can't outgive God. <clears throat> Solomon knows, if I, if I give queen, the Queen of Sheba all the gold here, God would replace him. He has that much confidence in God. So he, he let her choose whatever she wanted other than that which she gave him. Right, because that would be a rather rude thing to do. Well, you gave me these spices, but you can have them back. Right? <laughs> no. Regifting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't regift back to the same person. I did. I did hear of a of a couple that sent the same birthday card back and forth. They just didn't sign it. They sent it back and forth to each other, and they, they did this for like fifty years. <laughs> it's, it's it's funny, but it's you know they are at least thinking of each other. So Solomon allows her to take whatever she wants. She's already gotten what she came seeking for. She came seeking the wisdom of Solomon and got far more than she was expecting. Now we're not told what she may have loaded up and took, but I don't think she took as far as physical things, I don't think she took a whole lot. She might have taken a little bit here, a little bit there, you know. 
nothing that wasn't replaceable for Solomon for sure. She came seeking his wisdom. And she left having found it and been astounded by it. All right, so let's pick up in verse 13. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600, three score and six talents of gold. Now, before we go too far, <laughs> I know this is the, that number, 666. Right. Solomon is not the Antichrist. <laughs> just got to put that out there. This just happened to be the sum of money that he received each year. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with end times. All right, verse 14. Besides that which Chapman and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of beaten gold went to one target. And 300 shields made he of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Wherefore the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and stays on each side of the sitting place, and two lions standing by the stays. And twelve lions stood thereon, there on the one side, and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. So Solomon's throne is rather impressive as well, and he has... 12 lions, six steps, so there's one on each side coming up to his throne where he would, where he would be sitting. So those aren't, those aren't small steps. No, they're not going to be, yeah, they're not going to be tiny little steps. Yeah. These, are, these are more like, this is more like six landings, you know, the, yeah. the, with these large lions sitting on them wow. or standing on them. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. All right, so let's pick back up in verse 20. And all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not anything accounted in the days of Solomon. For king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hiram. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought, to, sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. God... God is absolutely amazing. We, we go back to when Solomon asked, you know, uh, well God, God, God told Solomon to ask for what he will and that he would give it to him. And Solomon's answer was wisdom. I need wisdom. And then God's response was, not only am I going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you wealth, I'm going to give you fame, I'm going to give you just blessing after blessing, more than you can count because you asked for wisdom. Now, his wisdom is, is such that the kings of the earth, of the, of the, the known area, right? Because I know there's gonna be some people out there who are gonna argue that, you know, that, well, there was this region that didn't, that didn't even know Solomon existed. But of the known area, these kings sought out Solomon and his wisdom. They came to him with questions just like the Queen of Sheba did. What about this? What about that? What is this? How does that work? And Solomon had a ready answer every time. No matter what they asked, Solomon had that answer. And, it, and at this time he's saying, 
to the glory of God. Everything he speaks is because of the glory of God. When they come and see Solomon and his wisdom, they have this understanding that it is God who blessed Solomon with that wisdom. It is it, the queen of Sheba acknowledged, look, look at how wonderful God has blessed you to be over this nation and to, to, to judge them. God put you there. Now she's, she's not a believer when she comes there. But when you read that statement that she says, happy are your men, happy are your servants that they get to hear your wisdom. She's, she's converted. She says, there is a God in Israel that I want to know. God was showing himself to the other nations. Now, unfortunately, later on, what we're going to see is that these other nations started coveting what Israel had without wanting to go through what Israel went through. They didn't want to worship that one true God, but they wanted everything Israel had. We'll get there, but we're not there yet. It's a point to be made, too, with wisdom when you think of what it says over in the book of James. <coughs> Any man lack wisdom. Now we're yeah. under grace. Yes. Okay, now we're under grace. Yes. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you want to know something, ask God. Ask God, he will direct you. That doesn't mean that you're going to say, well, God, uh, how do I do this? And all of a sudden, you know, out of the... No, you're going to have to do something, right? God, God, he can do that. Sometimes he will do that. I've had that experience with him where I didn't know how to, how to fix something and, and asked him. And I've had that thought, do this. Okay? But most of the time... What God will do is he will give you information for you to go research and find what you need to do, right? God will answer it. He really will. Any man who lacks wisdom, let him go and, and ask of God. It, it, and he's there. God's there. He hears you. All right, so let's pick back up here. I'm going to reread verse 23. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. Again, I'm just going to say they acknowledged God was the one who put the wisdom in Solomon. Verse 24. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and raiment, harness and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt and out of all the lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet and in the prophecy of, ah of Ahiah the Shilonite and in the visions of Edo the seer against Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. So we come to the end of Solomon. Solomon started out really, really good with God, but didn't end that way, unfortunately. Yeah, part of the part of it was um, uh, that last that yes. last little bit where horses, chariots, and God 
God yes. says, no, yeah. we don't that goes, do those. No, then that goes against the law yes. that was written. He is not to multiply horses and chariots. He's also not to multiply wives. David, David broke that one as well. And Solomon did too. Um, but he did worse than that too. Because now he started allowing his multiple wives to have their pagan worship in Israel as well. And I think that's really where Solomon started messing up because that sets the wrong precedent for future generations. It should have been worshiping the one true God. And, and if you're gonna have the multiple wives, which I don't think he, he should have done, um, it's against what God had written. But they should have all converted and worshiped the one true God. He should have made that his, his, his own personal command of the king is that you will worship the one true God. Um, it seems to Dave that that reflected the very next ruler. Yes, it did. Yes. Was yeah. a rascal. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it, it had a, a definite influence on Rehoboam, no doubt. And he was not only hard-hearted, but hard-headed as well. Um, and caused the split of Israel. Now I've also looked up Sheba and to try to see where Sheba is at. And it is, it is there are people who are of the opinion it is somewhere from Africa and others who say, no, it's somewhere in the Near East. Um, so it's anywhere from India around the corner and down into Africa. Nobody seems to have a pinpoint on what Sheba or where Sheba actually was as far as the people I studied and, and researched. Um, there's, there's just all kinds of different guesses. Um, seeing that she brought certain spices and things like that um, is what some people lead uh, to most likely uh, India. And yet others say, but she came with camels, which are more common in Africa. And so it's like, well, we don't know. Well, and, uh, and regardless of where, yeah. I, think, I think the biggest point is that it was a large... Uh, a large kingdom. Yeah, yeah. She obviously had a queendom. Yeah, a queendom. <laughs> yes. Um, but it was a but, long journey. We had but it was, yeah. Time. It it was a long journey. So we know it's not like like right near Egypt. So if it's in if it were in Africa, it's in the southern part of Africa. If it's in the the near east, it's not as near as we might think, and it's more like India. And traveling from India to Israel would be a long travel as well as, as it would be from, from southern uh, parts of Africa. What was it, important there too is that Solomon's reputation, no matter how far away mm -hmm. uh, Sheba is, yeah. it got there. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It got the, the queen excited about mm -hmm. finding out more about him. Yeah, I had always heard that, that Sheba was Ethiopia, but I don't know that for a fact. Speaking of which, yes, sir. there's a very ancient, deeply embedded tradition in the country of Ethiopia that the Queen of Sheba was from there. And not only that, without going into a lot of detail, where it tells us in uh, verse 12 here that Solomon gave her all her desire. Mm -hmm. One of her desires was to bear his child. And so the tradition goes, and I'm familiar with this because I spent some time in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. However, uh, and that, that started a line of kings in the country of Ethiopia, the last of which was Haile Selassie, hmm. okay, who was in the early, mid-70s, was deposed when the country was taken over by Marxists. Right. And all these hundreds of years, they had these kings passed down um, because of the, the child that Sheba supposedly bore. Hmm. Interesting. 
that is an interesting, that is very interesting. So we're going to throw it out there. It, it may well have been Ethiopia. Like I said, I, I heard that when I was younger and, and, and uh, didn't have quite that, that much of an explanation with it, but I like that explanation as to why they think it could be Ethiopia because the Ethiopians are saying, well, this is our tradition. This is what we've you know, been taught oh, yeah, from, from, way, way back. Yeah, from when we were little kids. Good possibility. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> Another, uh, one other thing that I just wanted to kind of point out is with the distance mm -hmm. of, of uh, her queendom mm -hmm. uh, and then all these other kings that come to Solomon, We've got to remember Solomon would have had the wisdom to be able to talk to him probably in their own tongue. That's a good possibility. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. would amaze. Yeah. I, that would be amazing as a king mm -hmm. going and seeing another king. And, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's kind of like today uh, I, was, I was watching uh, the UN or, or something mm -hmm. like that. And you see these people from all these other countries speaking English, no interpreters. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's just one language. But when you talk about the fame of Solomon yeah. and all these kings coming, in my mind, with all the wisdom that God gave him, right. it would yeah. have been the wisdom of their of their native tongue of all these kingdoms yeah yeah and then and and along those same lines you have to ask yourself why would they take the time to learn hebrew yes you know they came to ask him questions but if he already knew how to speak their language and that's that that's who they're seeking to to counsel with anyway then you know, why take the time to learn when you can just talk to, to him and say, you know, okay, so who's got the best hotel here? <laughs> Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah, so, yeah, Solomon says my house. <laughs> All, right. All right, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Dave, several times she refers to your God. Do mm -hmm. you think that she carried away any sense of faith in God? Showed. She was, yeah, she was certainly amazed by Solomon's God, right? And yes, she refers to, to the Lord thy God, and she doesn't ever refer to him as my God, yeah. right? So there's no absolute clear um, statement that says she converted. But with the impression that she has spoken, it certainly sounds like she is is right there. She's believing that that the God of Israel could well be the one true God, uh, just based on on what she is observing. You know, look at your servants; they're happy. <laughs> it's, it, servants in in other places don't don't ever look this happy. They're they're very solemn. They're respectful. Yes. But happy in that service? No, it doesn't happen. But when you're blessed by God, yeah, it's amazing. Yes? A couple more quick details. The, this long line of kings that I've referred to, mm -hmm. part of their title was Lion of the Tribe of Judah. That was part of their title. Not only that, but for hundreds of thousands of years, there's been a community of Ethiopians who are Jewish. Yeah called the Falasha Jews, many of whom the country of Israel has brought to Israel. Yes. Yeah, I w and that, and that part I was aware of, that they, mm -hmm. they had, uh, there was a Jewish people in Ethiopia. Yeah. Um, there is, I also saw a documentary where there is uh, evidence of uh, Jewish altars in, uh, in Ethiopia from, from ancient times, which is kind of impressive. It you know, shows you that they reached at least, the, the message reached down at least that far. And it's, it's wonderful to hear that God had, had reached out. You know, the world knew 
about the one true God, it, at least through Solomon. Yeah. And, and it's remarkable how God blessed Israel at that time. <laughs> when, when you can say that, that, that Solomon had as much silver as the road had rocks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that, that is wealth beyond right? But they understood that to be that the God of Israel, the one we know is the one true God, was blessing Israel in such a tremendous way that the rest of the world was just awestruck by the power and the generosity of their God. Their being Israel's not their own because, well, their own are false gods. But they see this and there's, you know, sadly it turns to covetousness of the possessions instead of turning to the one true God as they should have done, in which we all should do. And therein, my friends, is my application for today. Accept the one true God. Ask Christ Jesus into your heart. Ask God to forgive your sins. And then start worshiping him. Start praising him. Get yourself out of the way and let him work in your life. Be willing to do what God asks you to do. And you will find true peace and joy in your life. I'm not going to say wealth. God doesn't promise that. He's delivered it on to some people, but... He doesn't ever promise that. What he promises is that peace that surpasses all understanding and what a joy comes with it. Pastor, you got something. I know you do. I, I just wanted to share this <laughs> statement when he asked for wisdom. Over in 1 Kings uh, chapter 10, verse 24, it says, And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put on in his heart. Mm -hmm. So God really used Solomon to get his deity to worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. Not you yeah. know, not just across the river, but mm -hmm. the whole world. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, even at this time God is reaching out to the Gentiles. Yep. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. He he is reaching out to everyone. He's blessing Israel, saying, look at what I can do for you if you'll just let me. <laughs> in, in all honesty, that's it right there. If you will just let him. All too often, we stand in the way. No, no, God, I, I want this tiny little pebble. And God says, but I got this mountain of blessings for you. You can have the pebble, but I'd sure like to give you the mountain. You can put your pebble on it. Get out of the way, let God work with you. Let God work through you. We have no light of our own, but we can be polished up and we can reflect the light of the sun, S-O-N. Yes. <laughs> you know, too, Dave, I uh, remember when I was down in Mississippi, uh, Lee and I went down to visit my sister and, and we went to church and the church was really growing and I had a chance to visit with the pastor and, and, and that, and then a couple of the deacons, you know, and the, the question uh, came up and asked the pastor, how, how have you grown this church and been so successful? He said, just getting out of God's way. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Just get out of God's way and let him do it. Let him do it. And then have the patience to let him. Yeah. Because it's God's timing, not yours. Have the humility that, too. Yes, and the humility. Yes. So understand that if God gives you a million members, that's to the glory of God. And get to know you each one to, of them. Yeah, yeah. Take time to, to know everybody. <laughs> You're going to have to to get to know them in groups. So. <laughs> and as a side note, Dave, um, the uh, the YouTube uh, the the picture 
on your YouTube uh, on on Second Chronicles. Mm -hmm. That is the scene of the Queen of Sheba standing, talking with Saul with Solomon. Solomon. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you recognize that. Yeah, that's really cool, isn't it? Yes. And what a what a what a wonderful picture that is. That's that's beautiful. All right. Any other questions, comments? Okay, then that's all I have to say about that. Good job, Dave. Good job. And let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we, are, we just rejoice that we have your written word that we can go back to and, and read and reread, Lord. And it touches us different every time we read it, Lord. You show us new insights and, and open our hearts and our minds and, and say, hey, what about this? Look at that. God, we thank you as we get a better understanding and we get to see you more and more and the love that you have. God, the Bible is, is your love story to us. And we thank you for that love. We thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for our salvation through Christ Jesus. Help us then, Lord, to be your good ambassadors. Father, just polish us up and let our light shine so that others may see you through us. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Dave.